ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. And today I thought we'd take you through a full day of eating. I need the scales. Because again, I have a, the day off, which is very nice. So I thought I'd just take you through a full day of eating, roughly 30, probably 3700 calories-ish, depending on how many calories I burn during my run. Because today is a double training day. And I'm gonna lift early in this morning and then later on in the afternoon, go for my interval runs. But as always, I start the day off with just a black coffee. I'm not sure the exact measurements, but I think it's 15 grams per 500 mil. So I go for 30 grams, I think that's about right. And this makes about a litre of coffee, which as always, the cannonball coffee, maximum charge today, the, the higher caffeine monks I'm feeling rather tired. But I'm not long back in from a walk, hence the hoodie and hat still on. I like to have my coffee 90 to two hours after I wake up. I wake up at quarter past six, 20 past six. Uh, what's the time now on the clock behind me? I think it's just around half eight. So I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm a bit weird and I like to have at least one cup of coffee before I start eating. For some reason, I feel like the caffeine won't be as effective. That's just my belief. I know it's not true, but that's just the way I am. So I'm gonna have this. I've actually got to go and jump on there. Monday morning work meeting, although I'm not in work, I still have the meeting, so I'm gonna have my first cup of coffee, have the meeting, and then come back down to the kitchen for breakfast. Also, let me know this is a bit strange, but I like to add ice to my first coffee today just to make it drinkable, so I'm not having to wait for it to cool down. Now I know I could just make it iced coffee, but I don't have the equipment for that, and I just feel I need something a bit warmer to, to get me going, especially in these colder months. Share yeah, them in the comments is adding ice to your first coffee in the morning. Weird, does anyone else do it? Or should I just learn how to make iced coffee for the mornings? Anyway, let's head upstairs for the meeting because I am running late as usual. Morning, not bad, how are you? And here we are with breakfast. Just got the usual protein oats. This was it, oats, protein, almond milk, brown and maple syrup. I was going to show you how to make it, but I've shown it far too many times already. But the key to get this, this nice consistency of the protein oats is to cook the oats first and add a two to one ratio of milk to oats and then add one to one ratio of whatever powder you use onto that. So 100 grams of oats, 30 grams of protein powder, be 230 mil of milk of choice. And I forgot to mention macros before. Okay, I'm not really sad to have minimums for protein and fats. The minimum of protein is 150, 160 fat, around 90 grams. And then everything else, just carbs, just to fill in the calories and obviously fuel me because I'm running as well. So I'm gonna enjoy this. Calories max on the screen, I think it was 767 yeah, calories. Um, with, let's break it down. 37 grams of protein, 120 grams of carbs, 11 grams of fat, and 13 grams of fiber. So, pretty good, good breakfast. It's probably the highest calorie meal before dinner. So I'm gonna enjoy this, finish the rest of the coffee. This is cup number two of probably three or four, far too much caffeine, but I had to get it all in one hit in the morning and then it just maintains me nicely throughout the day. So I'm gonna enjoy this. And have a time to head to the gym for that low body session and probably the final one of the hypertrophy block. So, one apple teeth. Mm -hmm. Also, I like to eat around two to two and a half hours before training. If you feel anything sooner, just it kind of just sits on my stomach a bit, a bit too much. And just I feel like two to two and a half hours is just a good time to let some of it sort of start to digest and get into the, the system to, to fuel me for the session. It is now time to head to the gym, as usual, later than planned. But before we do that, we are having two scoops of Ghost Pub, that sour watermelon. Oh, really nice. Yeah, I just love sour things. I feel like the placebo effect, they just take effect quicker. I can actually feel them doing something rather than it just tasting like, juice. What plan for today? Four sets of eight on squats, four sets of six on deadlifts and then 
a couple of rounds of 50 meters on the walking lunges and maybe some abductor abductor work and then run this evening. I can't try and keep Mondays very low volume because I'm currently doing intervals on those days when I have the time. If not, I'm debating the idea of adding 20 to 30 minutes of running at the end of the session. But for now, let's go and hit those squats, deadlifts and lunges and then try and get as much time as we can before the sprint so that'll probably only be a few hours. I thought I'd use a different rack this morning to mix things up a bit and to do a voice over to save fighting the settings because the music here. I was noticing the audio was only coming through the left side on some of the earlier clips, thereby not doing anything to the mics between clips. Anyway, managed all four sets of eight at 120 quite comfortably, which has made me wonder if I started too light or I'm starting to recover well because my nutrition is much better. Although I'm thinking of dropping to sixes next week as I'm looking to start adding in some more high rocks movements and conditioning. Also a top tip to look stronger on the internet is to hide your belt underneath a baggy jumper. Although an actual tip is what I've been focusing on recently is thinking about driving my knees forwards as I start my squat which has helped me keep the weight over my midfoot and actually feel my whole leg engaged during the squat. And one thing that's helping me keep my sessions a lot shorter is using my watch to time my rest period instead of using my phone as I can end up scrolling and resting 5-6 to six minutes which at this point in my training is a little bit too long. And my hip was still feeling a little bit funny from the leg press, what, over a week and a half ago? So with deadlifts today, my feet were a little bit wider, but I was still focusing on sort of dropping down and trying to pull straight away, which felt pretty comfortable, although on this bar it was very slippy, even with the chalk. So I was having to do a quick re-gip between reps. But just like the squats, these felt pretty comfortable for four sets of six. So next week I'll probably be dropped down to either fives or fours. And because the track was being used, I swapped in these sandbag Zercher reverse lunges and they were surprisingly tougher than the regular walking lunges I've been doing, particularly on my course, that's an area I need to work on. I was only doing sets of 30 of these with about a minute rest between, but my abs and legs were burning. Last week's rounds of 50 metres felt like nothing compared to these. Finishing the session with some adductor abductor work, which I feel is starting to have some carryover into my main lifts. And all in all, a solid session to kickstart the week. Now it was time to head home for some lunch. So that was probably one of the the best and quickest Monday sessions I've had for a very long time. Everything just felt strong. Maybe I think it's because I've been fueling myself properly. And yeah, just felt pretty good. Normally Mondays don't feel great because Sundays I barely do anything. But yesterday we went to Gravity Max in Liverpool 1 with Kelly and her nephew and spent a day wandering around there, wandering around town. So was moving for quite a lot of the day and obviously had good food, had pizza for breakfast yesterday. Well, at 1 o'clock went to Nightcrawler. I went to a dessert place and then had a good good big serving of spag bowl. But before we head home for lunch, and because I'm training twice today, I'm having a serving of jelly babies, my favourite sweet. Now I know people say meal timing doesn't matter, but because I'm training twice a day, I won't be that glycogen depleted because lifting doesn't deplete glycogen that much, as people thought. But I like to have these just to get some sugar in, get that recovery process started and fuel up for the run. So I'm gonna have a serving and a half of these, one serving is, I'll put the calories macros on screen, 87 calories, 21 grams of carbs, that'll be 30 grams of carbs, mainly sugar, just to get fuel in me, and then home for a smaller lunch, like I said, I don't like eating too much before, oh, drop one, before running again, because I don't want to throw up, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, we'll have six, there we are, so six jelly babies, going to have those on the drive back, and then see you all at home for lunch. <laughs> We have a bit of a poverty lunch. I say lunch, it's more of a more of a snack because I have no meals ready right now or no proteins cooked. Normally I have chicken sausages because it's been Christmas and whatnot. I've just not been preparing food as usual, which is something I need to work on more this year rather than just I can only go to the shops and buy noodles for, for work, but I need to really get on meal prep and focus on my nutrition. But what we have here is the ghost protein and chocolate. It's a bit cold after the gym, so I have one of those and just Two slices of malted bloomer with 85 grams of banana, 10 grams of honey, 15 grams of spread, topped with some pink Himalayan salt to get those electrolytes and sodium back on board, which brings me out for, what brings the meal to, where is it gone? 600 and, 
six, oh, what's it gone? Why is it messed up? Anyway, it'll be on screen, 659 calories, about 30 grams of protein. So I'm gonna enjoy this, watch on YouTube, and probably run in around four or so hours, three or four hours, depending on how I'm feeling, obviously, daylight hours. So yeah, burn apple teeth. Mm. So it's a sort of good banana on toast. If I cut it off some peanut butter, but because I'm training again later, keeping the fat relatively low. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this and then chill for a few hours and then go for some intervals. So it's been a few hours since lunch and I'm just getting ready to head out for a run. It's currently 6 p.m. So that's only been three and a half hours between, well, four and a half between ending lifting and running, but three and a half since finishing food. I know most people say to get the best of both, you want 24 hours or at least minimum eight hours, but in terms of optimal for yourself, just find what works. I could have stayed and done them at the gym, but I like a little bit of a, a break and just keep all the intense work on the same day. But right now, it's about to have one scoop of the beta alanine, which is about five grams. I'm gonna, I finally charged my massage gun since high rocks. So I'm gonna give the legs a little bit of a blast on that and then head out for maybe the final week of 10 by 400s or I'm thinking of 400s, 800s, 1200s sort of each week to sort of um, progress that way if that makes sense I'm still trying to figure out the running side of things and I'm going to test them out today I'm running in the joggers again but I'm just going to try and wear a t-shirt because Jack did wearing I had to get way too hot thankfully it's a dry evening so hopefully I stay cool don't get too cold and but at the same time, don't get too hot. So let's get this down, not put it, not chuck it to the back of my throat this time. And then let's get out for the run. Cheers. So that is the run done. 7.6 kilometers worth of intervals. We'll say 7.6, 10 by 400. Slight, only slightly better than last week. Did feel slightly better because I was cooler just going on a t-shirt. I thought I'd regret it straight away because it was rather cold to the first 10, 15 minutes of the warm up. But then I got into, as I got into it, I got hotter. So I was able to, I think, stay cooler. So I didn't feel it was as hard, if that makes any sense. But anyway, that burnt, I think, 610 calories. So I'm going to eat back 90%, which is roughly 550. So that's going to bring a total to around 3,750 calories for the day. So for dinner, I decided to do the day when I had was with Kelly's. Got this for my birthday and it was a book of dirty burgers. Now I saw this one. It was a, what say, it says an English breakfast burger, but I'm gonna add a few things to it, take things away. Oh, there's bacon, it's got bacon on the fridge. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna use these chicken sausages. I'm gonna take the skins out of, off there. Have those. Chuck in some hash browns, fry them off. Fry off some black pudding, fry some eggs, have those in some brioche buns, along with some sweet potato fries on the side. So I'm gonna chuck this all together and then I'll show you the finished product and we'll go over the calories and what I have left for the rest of the evening. As you can tell, I, I like to feast of an evening, although it's only half seven. I'm in me pajamas. I just wanna get comfy. It's like day off, first day of the week and I'm done in from training. So let's chuck this all together because I am hungry. And here is dinner. Can't quite see it, but there is a hash brown, chicken, sausage burger, black pudding and a fried egg on top. The second one has no extra chicken sausage burger because it didn't actually turn out to be that much. I can only sort of make one sort of burger patty out of it and a load of sweet potato fries. So this brings me to this whole meal is 1,793 calories, so quite a lot with 74 protein, 178 carb, 84 fat and five grams of fiber, leaving me with about 400 calories left for a nice little, nice little snack. Probably have like a, a protein yogurt and something, but that's the doorbell. But I'm gonna answer the door, have this, and then I'll see you all at my snack. And as the last meal of the day, with a bit of dessert, I'm having one of these protein yogurt pots, salt the caramel flavor, 22 grams of protein, from Aldi, along with their fake 
biscoff spread. So there, 30 grams of the crunchy biscuit spread. And that's going to be washed down with one scoop I've actually made yet of the brain gauge. It's helped me sleep. Well, my sleep hasn't been great recently. This is kind of helping me get to sleep quicker. I'm just a bit more recovered. The brain gains switch off. I had the 2.0 stuff, which may have been better thinking about it, but I haven't been able to find that in stock anywhere, so hopefully that's restocked soon. But yeah, this is the final meal of the day. What's that bring me out calorie wise? So, 3,721 3, calories, or a total of 161 grams of protein, 482 carb, 124 grams of fat, and 26 grams of fiber and yeah that's what a day meeting looks like on a double training day just eating back 90% of those calories burnt on the run and I forget that's what's really helped my training recently help me feel recovered and able to push more in the weights like feeling strong squats are feeling easier each week although still I'm not sure if I'm starting too light but both are making progress and long may continue so yeah enjoy this video hit the like button if you're new Subscribe, hit locations, all that jazz, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one, which will be testing the bench press. So hopefully, I really hope I hit a PB on bench, although it's not feeling likely, but we'll see. Anyway, I can go enjoy this and watch the rest of Reacher on Amazon Prime. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Peace.